My mom told me not to talk to strangers on the internet, but I'm glad I didn't listen. We are the Certified Nunas, your sisters in the love of Asian entertainment. Hi, I'm Amanda. I'm Jesse. I'm Natalia. And I'm Sky. And today we're going to talk about a foursome that just, that sort of epitomizes the term fierce. But before that, what's everyone been listening to? I have been on a big, like, girl kick lately. So I've been listening to our, like, Stan Women list, which has, like, five hours of music in it right now. So at work yesterday, actually, that was the playlist we put on, like, 90 songs and five hours of music so no repeats all day it was great but I just had uh Spotify throw into my like mix um I guess they're a group a duo called Chimmy and they're Mm. so good like so good I'm obsessed I'm like listening constantly there's just one album it looks like on Spotify, it looks like a ton of albums, but it's like they release One like song half the album, album as yeah. singles yeah. and then the full album. Mm. But um, like all the cover art is fantastic and um, it's really good. Like it comes across, it's kind of like um, Acmu in the way that it's mostly her voice a lot of the time but he accents it really well. And he's not like a rapper. He's a a singer. He has a a really nice voice too. A lot of the lyrics are in English as well as Korean. And it just is really nice, really smooth and chill and kind of like fun too. Like, um, yeah, I really, 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 really like it. So I just, keep listening to that when I should be doing other things but huh. I like it how about you Jesse um I've been listening to some things I like have a personal uh girl list that I've had on my Spotify for a while and that's like probably up to 10 hours of music just because I listen to it at work so I have to have something that's gonna play all the mm-hmm. time uh mm-hmm. and that's just like random stuff if you know spotify when you scroll down to the end of a playlist it'll give you suggestions yeah. and i just like will like every once in a while just throw up more people uh there's this uh new to me group that i found one of the news websites was talking about it because they run the charts and then i searched them and i now i've fallen in love with them they're a japanese group they're kind of like indie rock called king new like gnu mm-hmm. and They have this one song called Prayer X, which is, like, out of this world fantastic. I've, like, been listening to it on repeat, and it's just, it's amazing. And, like, every song that I've been able to find on YouTube, I really liked them. I was listening to a lot of Japanese stuff this month. Because also, um, Bump of Chicken, which is a group that's been around forever, like, I think since the mid-90s. They just released a song and they haven't released a song in like four years. And it's really good called Aurora. I really like this uh, Japanese singer Amyon. Amyon. I I don't know how to pronounce her name. But she has a song that like is fairly popular and it's been on the charts for a while. And I mean, like all of her singles are really great. Other than like, you know, Bomb's new music, which her new song is great. And I've been listening to that. Oh, the um, video is really pretty. Yeah, it is really pretty. I think it's really great. And we can talk more about it later. But like, I think it just like fit her voice perfectly and Dara's voice. And it it was really great and really sweet. But also in like people from my past doing stuff, uh, Young Sang from Double S 501, Double S 301, he just put out a song. It's a ballad song. And he's his ballad songs are really great. I think that's like pretty much it that I've been listening to this month. Hmm. What about you, Natalia? Oh, boy. Well, so I was, like, away last week, so I didn't do much listening. But, uh, well, I've been listening to non-Asian stuff, like some sort of weirdo. I'm, like, really into Panic at the Disco for some reason. (laughs) I don't know why. It's just fitting my vibe recently. But I have have been listening uh, mostly to infuse myself with the vibes for this coming Friday. I've been listening to a lot of Monster X. Uh, 
just, you know, just letting it wash over me. In fact, I introduced my mother to it today. She was like, oh, well, I was telling her like, oh, yeah, I'm going to Chicago maybe most likely in August so that to see a concert. And she's like, oh, like, you're going to a concert? Like, who's playing? And I was like, oh, well, let me introduce you <laughs> to Monster X. Their videos, a little gay. You're going to love them. Send them. I don't know. She hasn't. She hasn't messaged me back about her thoughts. I did. I did say uh, one of the gentlemen enjoys uh, taking off his shirt often and showing off his well sculpted muscles. And it turns out that he actually does it in the video for Drama Rama, which I sent her. So we'll see. We'll see what Mama J comes back with. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, I've just been, you know, whatever comes up in the shuffle. I don't really pay attention to it most of the time. I just sort of let it slide over me. Did you um, see the video of uh, Big Matthew from Card, his uh, his live, the clip yes! that's gone around where he's talking <laughs> about Wano having big titties? <laughs> big man <laughs> got made, yeah. big man titties. <laughs> yes, I died. I died. <laughs> Speaking of which, then he also, you know, shirtless in the new video mm-hmm. uh which we all video is very that. hot i don't really love the new song by card it's kind of like eh, it's okay but the visuals Mwah. yes it is Italian very chef stunning. finger kiss <laughs> <laughs> what about you guy what have you been listening to well i went to two concerts so that was that was my mm. thing mm-hmm. uh and I listen to just I listen to just a lot of K-pop on the plane and stuff, um, which is pretty handy. I found these <laughs> earplugs that are supposed to help you regulate pressure better because mm. I've had trouble with that before. Like there was one time my ears didn't pop and it was really crummy for oh, a few that's days. Annoying. That's so annoying. So I was concerned about that. Uh, so I actually had to wear these weird little earplugs and then put headphones over it compared to having tiny earbuds. So it was, it was this whole thing just so I could listen to music. <laughs> but it helped because, like, there were loud people near me, so it helped a lot. And then, yeah, the concerts. So that's really... How were they? That's a lot of music. In How were they? We need, we need the sweet deets. <laughs> yeah, we need the deets. sweet deets of the concert. Well, they were... It was pretty much what I expected, so it was, it was pretty good. My music taste, they're the group that put on the AT's concert up in Chicago. Mm. I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of opinions on how that's ran, so I'm not going to go into a lot of that, but I didn't see any huge, huge problems. Mm. I mean, it, it was kind of lax, and were there some things that could be improved? Sure. Uh, they, and I, I'd, I'm not even sure this would have been the company's fault. I mean, down at the front, they were kind of pushing and stuff, so there was a kid that fainted at some oh, point, oh, and that oh. kind of thing. And it really concerned the group, of course. So they had to go off stage for a while as that kind of got cleared up. I guess it was really hot down there. Seemed fine up in the balcony. So I think it went really well. So ATs, they did a lot of question and answer in between a lot of their songs. It was pretty cute. They even did like some Michael Jackson, some random dance stuff. So like to EXO songs, to a couple BTS songs, to Gangnam Style. It's pretty funny. Mm. Uh, they did pretty well at English themselves. Yeah, they liked talking a lot. Pretty cute. Um, Down in Dallas for Astro, they did a fair amount of English themselves. They didn't do as many question and answer game type things. But they, it was just a lot of happy to be here, yada yada type thing. (laughs) Just like usual. What was funny is they did use a translator more. And the first translator voice that you would, you didn't see the person. It was just this voiceover and it was this guy. He was kind of slow with getting it out there and you could tell the guys I wouldn't say annoyed but they obviously were like you didn't say the whole thing they were like Mm. waiting on him so like he would the translator would speak for a little bit and then you could tell that they were waiting on what else he should have said and so then eventually a girl voice started being the and she was quicker Mm. (laughs) but what was funny about it they all know enough English to where like the translator would rattle off stuff and (laughs) Then they'd be like, yeah, like, I totally understood. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, what I said. It was just really funny. I mean, all of them were acting like that. They weren't being mean. It was just, it was obvious they totally understood every bit of English that was spoken. And then uh, there was one time the translator didn't quite get all of Moonbin's, something Moonbin yeah. said. So then Inwu had to kind of hop in and immediately translate for him. And he was like, thank you. <laughs> it's funny. 
<laughs> but the translation thing, Drama Current and I were cracking up a lot at that because they they were kind of all getting a funny attitude about it, like not yeah. me, but just yeah, yeah that. <laughs> just totally, that. Maybe uh, they had to do it like as a like a sub for a subtitle. Like they were worried that even if they could speak English, you wouldn't be able to pick up a lot of it with yeah. their accent through the mic. Maybe. I mean, what they they would speak in Korean and then the translator mm-hmm. would do the thing. But it was funny because it was just obvious that the guys really knew English a lot. What So about the two concerts, the main difference between normal concerts I've been to, the octaves of the yelling of the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. So I typically have special earplugs anyway for concerts. But oh my gosh, the first song at the 80s concert, I forgot to put them in. And it wasn't the music that was getting to me. It was the voices around me, the screaming, the high pitch screaming. So then then I popped him in. I was like, oh, the world is a better place. And then same thing with the Astro concert. I popped my earplugs in and drama current. She kept forgetting to put hers in. So she had to have her hands over ears like most of the time. I was like, I kept on going, put your earplugs in. So it was just that that was. It's very, you know, back what NSYNC would have been, that type of a crowd back in the day. It's just the screaming, man. It's just funny. Because I'm not used to it. (laughs) Yelling, yes. but Or also for the Astro concert at the very beginning, they were playing a music video. They didn't even have the sound up very much at all. Uh, So the crowd was kind of singing it, which was cute. But it was also funny because they would get really excited seeing each guy pop up in the... I mean, when I say music video, it's one of the older ones. So it's one we've seen for a few years. And it, but, you know, like, new guy would pop up in the music video. Ah! Like, just, it was just comical to me that that was a thing to be excited about. But okay. So we're laughing about the excitement level of 15-year-olds and stuff. Makes you feel old a little bit. But it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so it was good. Marvelous. I guess that there's a new music video for Astro... That was released yesterday. And I haven't even seen it yet. That's how behind oh. I am on stuff. Oh, yeah. it's, it's their Japanese oh. release. Their de- their, well, I didn't know to look for it because their Japanese debut happens in a few days. Like at the beginning of oh, okay. this coming month. So timing wise, I didn't know I was supposed to be looking for a music video ahead of that. Like I'm kind of confused on why that occurred. Yeah. And I think it's it's also because it gets announced on their Japanese Twitter rather than Mm. my wires are crossed and I don't have Japanese translations half the time so I'm just kind of like what's going on uh so yeah I need to go watch that whenever we're done I'm behind and I don't even know the name of the song because it's Japanese obviously I don't know the name with my thing like I uh I really liked the Japanese version of uh the shootout video I thought it was better than the Korean version like just the video itself but um I just watched today the new video for the Steve Aoki uh Mm. Monster X now I have thoughts (laughs) Natalia's hot take um first off I am got robbed in that remix of the song there, he got nothing. He got one line that's like three words that repeats two times. That's it. The entire oh. Juon doesn't even rap, which is fine. He has a beautiful voice. I don't even think many of did anything but dance. I didn't. I didn't see him sing. And the song is nice, but I feel like it didn't really capture sort of the essence of Monster X. Like it's a nice song. It's like a. It's a. You know what it is? It's a good, like, white boy party song. You know what I mean? Like, but it really does not capture what sort of makes Monster X Monster X. You know what I mean? I thought it wasn't in their genre very much, but that no, was... No, like, but it was, a, it was a nice song, and it showed off, uh, showed off Kian's uh, incredible vocals, so thumbs up. But, like, that's, that's about it. That's, I don't know. I like it, but I don't... I like the video. Yeah, I enjoyed the watching the video. Really, the video was I really like nice. Steve like in the car Star, bopping like, along to the song and it's a little you know. masturbatory, right? Like he's bopping to his own song, like, yeah, like I did a good job. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's confident. So let's deep dive into how much we love to anyone, shall we? We shall. <laughs> Dup, 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 dup. 
da, da. So before we start, does everyone have a favorite song or two of to anyone that they that really speaks to them? I do. It's actually the first song I heard of them. Mm. It's come back home. Mm. I like and I, like I was able to figure out exactly when I first became a fan of to anyone back in 2014 it's been a while because youtube suggested a video to me and it was a video of them doing come back home like mm. on one of the the stages such a good um, video. such a good song and yeah and i listened to it and was like this is incredible and then literally like the next week is when i found to anyone tv and then just like binged just you were, dead. you were in, you were in the two yeah. of life. Yeah. Um, the first song I ever heard of two anyone is also my favorite song from them. And it's the song scream. Mm-hmm. And like such a bop. And I just randomly come up in a list when I was making like a workout playlist back when I like worked out. <laughs> 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 and like, it was just super tight. And to this day, every time it comes up in my shuffle, I'm like, yeah. Mm. Like that it just one. speaks to me. Speaks to me. I really like um, I Am the Best. Ah, um, yeah. classic. I like that one. Being a dick, every time I hear it, I'm like, who is? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's, right, that's right. my fantasy football uh, team's like, theme song. Every time I would win a week, I'd play that. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh. I sometimes play it when I have personal victories myself as well. Yeah. It's a good one for that. Like, <laughs> just when you feel do, good. Yeah. When you like do something great, you just turn it on. You're like, that's right. I am the best bitch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I really like Come Back Home too, but mm. I really like the Unplugged version. Mm. Like the that's Unplugged is the great. version I like the best of that one. My favorite, like, I, I have to specify, my favorite, like, version is the non-rap version. Like, the, mm. the added rap that they added for the music video, I don't like that version. I think my favorite song has to be I Am The Best, because the first one I saw of them. And mm. it, it was the first song of theirs that I bought and stuff and listened to a lot. But recently, as I was listening for this podcast, I really like I Don't Care. Mm. Mm-hmm. Probably just because the energy, the energy yeah. from that song. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of songs I I genuinely like, like Happy, and then even some of their kind of more ballady songs like Lonely mm. and Missing You, like those. I really love. And I I must admit, one of my personal anthems is a CL single, "Hello Bitches." <laughs> I play that song more than is appropriate for a chubby girl who never leaves her house. (laughs) I'm going to be real. I'm going to be real. I think of individual stuff, my favorite is uh, Minzy's uh, Ni Nano. I, like, Mm -hmm. love that song. I just, like... But I think that was the first... Like, I heard that before I ever heard anything really of to anyone. Like, I might have heard some of their stuff, but not really realized it was them, you know, had it come through the shuffle or something. But um, I sort of knew her before I knew the group. So mm-hmm. another song I like is Falling in Love. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was a good one. Some it's nice good, like, cameos in that music one. video, too. Huh? There is. It's a good, like, poppy, like, you yeah. know, you bounce to it. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. Like, you just want to dance. <laughs> yeah. I, that could be said for, like, a lot of their songs that you just want to, like. That's true. Bop around to it. it. Yeah. They're, like, they're just, like, bops. They're mm-hmm. bops. They are. Some of them are a little more aggressive bops, though. Where you're, like. <laughs> yeah. Yes. They're angry bops. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, fire or something. And I feel like. like I feel like since they're not around anymore as a group, like, that's kind of missing. Mm. Yeah. Like, of course, there are good girl groups out there. I'm not saying that. But as far as aggressive, very, I I, I know that Black Pink yeah. is fierce and stuff, and I'm, and I'm not trying to, like, compare the two necessarily, but I'm just, yeah, there, there was, there was a different energy going yeah, on. there was a lot of group, can, like, sort of in that 
time period, like girl groups that were like that, and they've all like disbanded. Yeah, like, and there hasn't been like a version of them because even Blackpink yeah. is an, in its own little different yeah era. Like it doesn't it, have the like. You can like, tell they're sister groups in a sense. Like you can kind of yeah. tell that they're both YG. The, mm. Certain there was one of the songs you could yeah through on the to anyone playlist, and I was like. Yeah, there's that one Blackpink song that sounds an awful lot like that. Like, not that it's It's a because copy, Teddy does like, everything, so just, <laughs> you're just hearing Teddy. Like, you can just tell that, yeah, the, like, related, you know? Like, the yeah. way sisters look alike but not the same, and, and yeah. you can see that they're, yeah. like, the little sister group. And yeah. They've been informed by what has come before them. Yeah. But they're not the same. No. But, but it does seem like that generation was very... There's a level of in your face mm. that I like feel like isn't like necessarily minutes, happening uh, anymore. What was some other Miss one? Miss A even kind of like yeah, Miss A a little bit. Brown eyed girls. Yeah. What would FX be in that generation or the yeah next? yeah especially they, like during like, Come Back Home area or yeah yeah they're definitely in the kind of like less like less poppy not like being mean pretty girl vibe and more aggressive and like playing with different things and playing with the different styles that are not what the general like girl groups like we're yeah. putting out you know being a little bit like different with like hair colors and like loud colors and loud patterns and then just having a lot more energy instead of like doing like pretty dances on stage yeah instead of going for like this cute innocent concept which is fine I have no problem yeah yeah that's fine it was more of like an aggressive like there was just an aggressive energy to it that I really enjoy I kind of missed that aggressive take on you know yeah music music from girls I mean it it was a really nice thing that kind of faded away a little bit and I'd like to see it come back like now they have like the whole like girl crush concept but I think that's sort of like a pale like a poor man's version of Mm -hmm. that you know because it's like what I liked about especially like if you look at the music video for like I am the best like it's not sexualized Mm -hmm. that much like you know of course they're like you know they're sexy or whatever but like that wasn't the focus where I find a lot of these like girl crush ones it's about like being sexy but in a leather jacket yeah <laughs> you know like eh. yeah like okay sure but I like that it was, I feel like to anyone was more music for women as versus trying to like entice men does that, mm-hmm. yeah. that make sense yeah yeah it, to me it kind of felt like it was almost transgressive but it wasn't like I mean they obviously weren't being they weren't saying bad words or whatever, but yeah. as far as the attitude they would sometimes have in a couple of their music videos, mm-hmm. it would just be very in your face and not going to apologize about it. And I just missed that. I mean, I came to K-pop way after a lot of these groups disbanded, but I would <laughs> I'd go back and see it. And I'm like, man, why isn't anyone else doing this right now? I know. Yeah, it's it's so interesting mm. because they're like you can also take groups from that era, and that music is still prevalent in the groups today as soon as all of like the two anyone type groups died or disbanded it just like ceased to be and almost like it's like that group transitioned into more jazzy soulful stuff mm. like or like r&b stuff but not in your face type thing mm. so there's just this weird thing where you're like I, but i want that back yeah to, i think the like clo- i want it new stuff yeah i think the closest uh-huh. that i saw that was similar to that even though Four Minute no longer exists, was the song Hate by Four Minute, which was mm-hmm. very in your face and very had that energy and was not sexual in any way. Yeah. And then uh, and that was it. And then they disbanded too. And I was like, I was like really excited when that song came back because I'm like, maybe, maybe this, this style they disbanded is like back. a month or two yeah, after I know. that. Yeah, and I was like, and, too. And, I was like ah! and, and it's over. Thank you, Cube. <laughs> Break my heart again. <laughs> Oh, Cube. Uh, well, and I feel like anyone that's gotten closer to it, it's kind of uh, of the sexual nature is kind of the only way you get close to a more angry or transgressive mm-hmm. thing. And it doesn't it doesn't have to be that way. 
Like, yeah. I think that's the only version we were kind of getting for a while. Mm. I just think more girl groups need to be allowed to do stuff without it having to cater to the male gaze. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And... It's and such honest, a deep cultural thing, though, yeah, man. It's, it's not even a cultural thing. That's like a worldwide. Well, uh, but, but specifically, specifically, but specifically, yeah. I I feel like there needs to be a girl group that comes out of an entertainment company that's owned by a woman, and then I feel like that'll be different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I kind of feel like Dreamcatchers kind of trying to be something. They're yeah. not like to anyone, but they're like making a point of not doing the typical things that a girl group that normally would be in that group, especially because they started out, they started out as a different group and mm-hmm. they were like that. And they were like, no, we need to step back and change this. So they're kind of like actively going against, but it's mm-hmm. not to anyone, but it's their own little thing. It kind yeah. of a little skewed more to like Japanese pop, but I feel like it ha- there is some smaller company that has to have someone that right. they're, maybe they're training them right now and then yeah. they just haven't debuted them yet. I feel like when we do see some of that kind of stuff come up, it's more in the um, like solo artists mm. and frequently unfortunately it's the the American artists like yeah. the american korean mm-hmm. artists who have come to korea to, like just, and they're like bringing their american but yeah. i feel like that doesn't actually reflect change in the no. music industry or the culture there because, because they're just, an outsider already exactly you're yeah. just gonna have you know people are gonna be like ah, americans you yeah. know those crazy americans <laughs> but i feel like there's you know there's an opportunity for more of this sort of thing, especially right now with all of the cultural changes going on Mm -hmm. in Korea due to all the shenanigans, shall we say. So like, I'm just seriously waiting for the, the, the Jesse and uh, Hyena, like there's, Oh yeah. 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 Yes. Well, that, and that's why the whole that. the whole of this of not having a more in your face girl group it mm. hurts. It hurts that there's a hole there right now. Like yeah, yeah. because if even a, even if a girl group that usually doesn't have a song like that, if they could come out with one song, it was very uh topically apt for what's happening. Yeah, yeah. I I do know. So CLC, have any of you? Yeah, I like CLC. So Crystal Clear, whatever they're called. So their recent no song was kind of cool. Like yeah. it, it, it was a step well, towards that. The black least. dress is actually pretty legit. Yeah. And like I, I, I would some of EXID stuff. It's definitely yeah, yeah. holding yeah. out. It just doesn't have that like really aggressive strong energy. kind of like rap based. Mm. It's also the genre too. Like they're aggressive, but like still not in that genre yeah i think I clc that, is probably closest right now i would that say new group um itsy definitely seems like that's kind of the vibe they're headed for but like they've got like I'm only hoping, a little bit you know yeah. they're also very okay. much like a lot of their song is very much like twice pretty like mm. it was like in looks they're this way but in actual yeah. song yeah. definitely not that's an what brought me song. about that song man i was like it's so it was i weird. have no <laughs> problem with yeah it's just it was yeah. weird and also i was just because i'm also a miss a fan so i was just wanting a miss a too and like there's just no miss a or wonder girls yeah. group girl group at jyp right now and i was just like i just want something like that i don't want another twice like, Even if I they like don't twice. look like. Don't get me Well, wrong. yeah, no, no. I just want more like, genres. I like exactly. lots we of different Exactly. We don't need genres. every girl group to be the same. So we exactly. don't need new girl groups That's that are why. reminding us of somebody else. We want new girl groups yeah, that are like, I, I feel like, sister like, groups, but not it, twins. What I find sort of is a, is a failing in, in just the entertainment industry um, as a whole is that they try to recreate previous successes instead mm. of looking for new sounds to be its own success. Mm. And I, I, I sort of think um, this is you know, in this sort of genre, like, uh, for example, uh, Big Hit's new group. TXT. Yeah, TXT, like, like, st- like don't, you don't need to recreate BTS. You could have gone in a new direction. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's, I feel like it, 
No, no well, offense to those TXT fans out there, but I don't feel like it's working that great. <laughs> you know what? I did not like the song that they released, but I've listened to a couple of their B sides and really yeah, liked I like them. Yeah, I like their B sides so. more and than that's their... really sad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To me, like... to me, they are totally different from BTS. I mean, I'm not gonna go down that really far, but I'm pretty easily impressed by cute boy group stuff, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I was like. Oh, this isn't moving me much. That's unfortunate. Yeah. I, I feel like I, they're not, uh, they don't have their own sound. Like, I, I feel like what sort of entertainment companies don't realize is that people actually like new things. Mm-hmm. They like they like uniqueness. They like, like, which I think is why ATs is doing so well right now. Because they have, like, a new sound that doesn't, that that's their own. And they have, like, a vibe that's their own. And they're mm-hmm. sort of, you know, building on stuff that existed before but in new ways. And I feel like there needs to be a girl group that can build onto anyone in a nice, aggressive, in-your-face way. Yeah. yeah. That's all we want. It's just so. surprising that it was so successful during that generation. Like, mm. And then there's the big hole right now of just not as aggressive. It's like, what? It's just interesting. Like, but it's, it could work right now, too. It, it like, would work yeah, even what's, better now that it did. Yeah. <laughs> just, it feels like it's there's nothing really stopping anyone that like you can see on the outside be like but this is like the prime time to do that sort of thing time for the the angry aggressive Alanis Morissette to like you know come out of her her pop bubble into her grunge rock yeah like it's the time it's the time all right now I'm done with all y'all maybe we maybe we need to get some of those Korean solo artists that just have awesome pipes and be like, let us lead you to the land of aggression just yes. for a little bit. <laughs> like, I get it. Like, in Asian cultures, being polite and deferent is um, valued. However, yeah. there's a time and a place to get <laughs> really pissed off about things. And, and right I, now is the right time. And time. That time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is all just staged anyway, so it's like they're just doing, like, they're just performing, not them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, this is just a a show that they're putting on, so it could, it, it could I work. I think that's part of it, too, though, like, is that you can tell when you're watching a group that where it's too put on. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Where there's not, like you were saying about 80s, that it works because that is kind of who they are like that's yeah. the direction they're like they're putting themselves into it it's kind of like bts works because they're putting themselves mm-hmm. into it you can't mm-hmm. just throw five people together and say and now we're doing aggressive girls go and yeah. like, like expect but it you- to work you could try yeah and it might do okay but like i think like to anyone has continued staying power because they yeah, had they play. Thing, right? Like, and it was their thing, mm-hmm. and they did it well. Mm-hmm. So I think more aggression. I I like angry girls. I'm but of I, the '90s grunge rock, you know, <laughs> era. Yeah. So I, you know, but I think it has to be organic and come from within as well. Like, or else you wind up with something where you're looking at it and going, it, it just doesn't feel quite like it's there i would still take like a produce 101 version of an angry girl group though <laughs> yeah <laughs> it would still come out I, with some okay yeah. music i'm pretty sure <laughs> there's a ton of groups out there that like you can tell that they're they're just acting and they're still doing fine too i feel like it also probably stems with the lack of producers because i mean mm. i love to anyone but like i have to give credit where credit is due and teddy is yeah. A lot of the reason their songs are as good as they are. I mean, like, they actually, they add to that song, but, like, the bass song is written, like, almost all of their songs is written, was written and produced by him. And so, like, you also have to have that. So you have yeah. to have a group of girls that are willing and can vocally work in that register and then also have a good producing team to back or, it up. And that actually understands team. the girls too, yeah. you know? Or you need a girl version of 17. <laughs> they just, their company has no money. So they have to produce all their own stuff from the beginning themselves. 
<laughs> just get enough girls that are super talented. Yeah. Go for it. Is there <laughs> enough there? <laughs> then are at a very small, poor company and just <laughs> send them off on their way. <laughs> I mean, you can just keep on shuffling them. You'll find like people. One who of work them will be aggressive. Well. Yeah. yeah, Find that perfect. Maybe even two. You also have to have an entertainment company that would be willing to support mm-hmm. an aggressive girl group too, mm-hmm. long term. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I've been like, there's the big three or whatever. But there's been some pretty like great stuff coming out of smaller companies recently, and some some sketchy legal stuff. Cough. King Daniel cough, but interesting good stuff that's coming out of these smaller companies. So yeah, and now I do think that- it's kind of the era for smaller companies right yeah. now. Yeah, like I, I feel they- like there's a shift. And also, like the bigger companies are, you're finding out like you know they don't pay their artists enough of what they're due. Cough, SM cough. Uh- <laughs> oh wait, I'm supposed to actually cough the word, not <laughs> not. <laughs> up. Um. Or, like, they're doing sketchy financial stuff. Cop YG cop. JYP, I guess, is fine. But, <laughs> like... One but never knows. One never knows these days. Along those lines of, like, the big three and everything, they just released the, like, quarterly whatever, or the financial records or mm. whatever, and Big Hit is in the big three this yeah. year or month or quarter or whatever like yeah. they, they entirely knock on somebody BBC. out of the top so um you know what I love about yeah it's, it's, it's like anything happens to be as big it's kind of screwed. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> they cast is just like <laughs> they're like oh god we got praying. to get cash cow going <laughs> <laughs> give them anything <laughs> anything they want they need a break though i'm just saying no Oh, yeah. There, there was a... <laughs> yeah, saying that a third of our day is left to make stuff for ARMY or rest. It's like yeah. making more second. content for your fans is not resting. I mean, I'm sure it's lovely for them and fun. I'm not saying that. But, like, yeah, sleeping. You guys <laughs> probably don't do it. Re- Recharging. I mean, like when Jin does his, like, eat Jin, you know... Mm. mukbangs or whatever and you're like all right at least they're eating i know yeah. they're eating. they may not be sleeping but they're eating <laughs> and it looks good a good so, okay. a good a good mukbang is always a good time so yeah yeah, yeah the thing about 21 is it makes you wish they were still around definitely the, the more I, you look yeah, into them so. the more you learn about their music the more you're like oh this hurts more now yeah. <laughs> I've really I see them talk. They talk about each other and how they wish they were still mm-hmm. together and still, you know, like yeah. they miss each other and Park Bum brings them in for her stuff too and like you just it's... kind of get that feeling that like if the other two escaped from YG, they'd all be like, "Yay, let's hang out again," you know, like yeah. They definitely didn't um disband because they wanted to Minji was getting pushed to, to the side and was not even given any sort of outside like Dara has a really big following in the Philippines she had it before she got into YG so she already had that and CL was like you know still doing stuff with Will I Am but like even then 21 started to do stuff with Will I Am like their first year yeah. out so those two had stuff and like Park Bomb was always she could do a solo album and be fine. Like she was the person that everyone loved and her music videos were getting tons of hits. But like Minji wasn't doing anything and so her leaving wasn't because she didn't want to be part of two anyone. She just left because she wasn't getting the creative outlet that she needed. Yeah. And you can tell that then when they couldn't work out to anyone it wasn't because the other three didn't want it they really did want it but something happened or whatever but um this past couple of weeks I've been re-watching all of to anyone tv which I I mean it's been years since I've seen it and like really that show just made me miss them so much especially um because the way that they interact on that show is completely different than a lot of other idols you see on these like TV like vlog type mm-hmm. things like there was something very genuine about it and there was like this home movies-esque 
And they really did have like kind of a connection that was just really great. And you can even see it now um, because Dara has a YouTube channel. She has a vlog channel and she vlogged the day that she went on set with Boom. And it was just the entire time. It was like, you could tell like there were cuts when she was like about to start to cry. And then they were just like discussing things and like how immediately when Boom knew she was going to be coming back and she had this song, she immediately was looking to like the girls and to anyone to work with. And because she also wanted to, and like just their interactions since they've disbanded, they've always interacted with each other. They've always made points to see each other on vacations or like Mm -hmm. if they're in the same country, they'll see each other. They are constantly talking to each other on social media. Like you can Mm -hmm. tell that this is a group that didn't want to be separated. Yeah. And it's not like anyone's orchestrating that. That's just them doing that. Like that's that's really them wanting to keep their connection to each other. Yeah, it just, it's, it's just it makes it really sad. Like, I mm-hmm. legitimately, being a fan, even though I wasn't a fan long enough for, because, you know, I only had, like, two years before they disbanded, having a fan and then being a fan and watching that stuff and then watching Dara's vlog, it was just very, very sad. You're like, oh, really? This is, this hurts because it yeah. just shouldn't have been this way. Mm. It just shouldn't have been this way. You know, it's, Jeez. it's like, not like, <laughs> It's not like a, a group like Sistar <laughs> where you can tell they just they were decided and it was so yeah. perfect and the two people that wanted to still like keep singing or are, are singing and the two that wanted to act are acting and yeah. so you can just tell it's a different type of feel of yeah, their mm-hmm. disagreement as opposed to like something like to anyone it's just it's sad I, I want new stuff from them yeah, not yeah. just new solo stuff do we know how long they have left in their YG contracts by any chance? I have no clue. So I mean, Dar- I know Darla is you. like a creative like director or something. She's oh. one of the directors at YG. Poor CL is just in the basement. Because she's so good and she she's good at writing stuff and she's a good yeah. rapper. She's like legitimately good and she's also a really good singer too. Technically, she's like really great. And so like. <laughs> That's and really then, sad. And the visuals. She's got she's got it all. She is the full uh, package. And, and yeah. they let her out of the basement to randomly do... I mean, wasn't she in a American movie this past year? Yeah, she was in the... Um, it was I a big action what, movie. Yeah, with like Mark Wahlberg or something. Yeah. And like, like she John was Malkovich. Actual, yeah, oh, trailer yeah. for it too. Yeah. Dara does a lot. So she does her... Her YouTube, she pretty much captures what she does. She was in the, like, she's mm. in the Trap movie, which I guess still hasn't come out or whatever. So she's done that, but she also does a lot of, like, stuff in the Philippines, and then she does a lot of modeling. So, like, right now she's, you know, doing top modeling for one of those really fancy mm. for such type brands, you know, that sort of thing. Um, So she at least has that going for her, but, like, yeah. you can tell that she wants to get back on stage, too. YG! <laughs> YG! Like, the amount of times that we just shake our fists and go, YG! <laughs> like, he's such a fucking monster. <laughs> that man. That whole company. Stupid is just monster. Fabulous. I can't I imagine, like, just girls joining the company now. Like, you just want to say to them, why? Is there, oh, is there nobody else who will take you? Somebody who watches you, like you, you know? Because he even does it to the music. actors there. Like, the actors. Because uh, you and Ah from yeah. Touch Your Heart, it's hard for her to get stuff. Because she is part of YG. Like Yeah. And she's, like, she's been hard. beloved. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. And she's a great actress. Especially yeah. a character actress. She's, like, phenomenal. And she could get so many roles. <sighs> Uh, it's, it's ridiculous I don't understand it because it's all stuff that would make them so much more money so right? like this is why I don't understand like, like, why they is, like do this you like, make more money so, there's sex- money from boys their sexism is losing them money <laughs> just think I mean, about the like the patriarchal nonsense it's like they could just support the women in their company just for greed <laughs> But they would rather lose money. <laughs> <laughs> CL and 
and Lehigh do something out of this world. They would like just like millions of hits like within day. Like right? it would be astronomical. Like you can go to nowhere and like see the comments and it could be about like winter or something and everybody's just talking about the girls in white yeah, sheets. Like, I, I, wish, I wish like Lehigh was featured on this. Like mm, I wish CL yeah. would come out of the basement and you're just like, yeah, all of us do. We thank, do. I, thank you, random just, internet commenter. <laughs> As soon as they were talking about um, Chinook from uh, ACMU going into the army, like immediately it was like, ooh, is she going to be with Lehigh again? Are they going to have more collabs? Like, is it going to, and it was like, nothing. no, of course not. He's been no. in the army for two years almost now and nothing. She's nothing. got a YouTube channel. <laughs> That's like about it. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's like, people love her. But it's, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. it's like the company thinks that she can't exist without her brother. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I'm calling it. Come at me if you want. She's the better half of ACMU. I said it. <laughs> I said it. She's better than him in every way. <laughs> I like him. He's great. He's cute. He's a nice little rapper. She's got... And he, clearly writes, he writes all the yeah. music. So, yeah. like... Yeah. like she just, working it. That voice. Her vocals are her like phenomenal. Face. They're stunning. She's got Especially the- for how young she is. Yeah. Like, it's- isn't that adorably That's terrible so uh, web drama, which was vaguely prophetic, by the way? Oh, and it was pretty. There was some truth telling going on with yeah, her there character. Yeah, there was in, in Part Time oh, Idol. That was the one. That was a good idol. one. I, I yeah. actually Her, really like, her, brother, her brother played by Haha, by the way, which <laughs> I thought was hilarious. And Both they are so dorky. And they're like, girls are screaming when he <laughs> comes in the room. And she's like, all right. And then as soon as he goes into the army, she loses all confidence, thinking that she can't perform without her brother. Things were being said. <laughs> I really like that show. That was a good one. So dragging. I would, I would. One of the things I said when I was watching that show was that I would listen to that band. Like if yeah. they were an actual group, I would totally yeah. listen to them. Like if it was a real group, I'd be down. I'd be yeah. down with everything about it. Maybe men shouldn't be in charge of the future of women's careers. <laughs> listen, I feel like men just shouldn't be in charge of anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> If last month has taught us anything, it's <laughs> yeah. that... Like, if literally, if history has taught us anything, it's that men should not be trusted to be in charge. They're just entirely too emotional, too hormonal, like... Not trustworthy, just, I tell you that. They, they don't follow their brains, they clearly... Or if, they if they're given their any benefits. power whatsoever, there should be a lot of checks and balances happening. Mm. Uh, um, but, like, you know... I just feel like they're just not temperamentally ready to be in charge of anything. <laughs> like, what if they get a boner? They're not going to be able to do anything. Am I right, ladies? <laughs> That's just going to be like, they're just going to fly off the handle with their boner out. Like, yes, putting it out there. There was a line that we crossed. <laughs> no, no. No, the reason that I say this is because the amount of times I have heard some dumbass white man say like, oh, are you on your period when I'm legitimately upset about something is just mind blowing, mind blowing. Like, what if I am on my period? I'm still legitimately pissed about your stupidity, white man. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> but most of the time I'm not. Like, no, fuck them. Just- what? Most of Get the out. time you're not on your period? What? I know, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> like, I don't know. 29 like, days a month? No, that's not how any of this works. <laughs> <laughs> to wrap up to anyone, I rant we up. wish they were back. We yeah. wish they had more music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We Do enjoy it. We miss him. Come back to us. Come back to us, to anyone. Escape your oppressors. Come back home. And reunite. Come back home. Come back home. <laughs> home is my heart we want you back yeah. in it <laughs> is there music coming out in the next little bit that people are looking forward to mm-hmm. i am ex- super excited i'm like refreshing spotify right now hoping that it's up i don't know what time it is in korea or when it stops getting released but ph1 has a new album like a big mm-hmm. nice, full album coming out yay i'm so excited 
So I'm really excited. And I just found out last night that Boa and Gak collabed on something and they're coming out with a song in April. And like, oh. dying. Because if you don't know Gak, you should go you should listen know. to Gak because he's amazing. Also, if you like ever listen to any Japanese, you have to know him. Like, mm. that's like saying you don't know, like, Elton John or someone like you just like you have to know gag and the fact that they collabed on something I just I'm super excited can't wait especially because I didn't even know I was like supposed to be waiting for something for them <laughs> and uh well, that's like my big one for me on the first of April uh Chen's first solo album comes out right and you know me, I'm a total exo hag. So like <laughs> anything they do, I will support. So I'm like real excited because he's just so sweet with his little eye smiles and he has such a beautiful voice. Um, as per usual, SM is doing nothing to promote yeah. his first solo album. So he's doing it himself, um, including, I believe, uh, busking he's going to busk his own, like so weak sm this is weak this is almost bad as the one week tempo promotions like jeez so anyway why, why is it that they handle exo that way i don't know because exo like if you look at how much like the money that they make exo makes them most of money? their money yeah <laughs> like their largest per, like for the groups like who makes the most money it's EXO. So why wouldn't... Yeah, EXO and Super Junior are their biggest. And they do nothing. They get nothing. Why wouldn't YG well, make money off the women? Super Junior does get to do stuff, but they're on their own label. Of these companies. Yeah. But like, yeah, does EXO need to go make their own label like Super Junior? Is that what needs to happen? I, I probably... Yeah, it's the only way that they'll get to do stuff. That's the only reason Super Junior does uh, the amount of stuff that they do is because they're on... They're on their own super junior label through SM. Yeah, I feel like EXO is probably going to go that route because it's getting a bit much. A yeah. bit much. It's like, you could promote EXO, but let's just add like nine more members to NCT for some reason. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that seems a good idea. Yeah, like, whatever. Like, no. What are they doing over, are they drunk? Like, I'm confused. I just, I'm concerned about SM. Like... <laughs> We need like, an intervention. No, they do. Like, what are they doing? What are they doing at this company? Like, yeah. that they, like, what are they spending their money on? Because it's not promoting their best ranking artists. That's for sure. Who is SM promoting right now? <laughs> no one. <laughs> NCT? NCT, that's it. NCT. The NCT's getting all the... But, like, and I like NCT. Don't get me wrong. But, like... How are any of those boys making any money on this? They can't be. They are. They're not. Like it's no most way. recently, I saw that they have no money. Like they pretty much said, mm-hmm. we don't have money. Yeah, and they just keep adding more, which divides up their shares. It's cruel. It's sure. a, NCT is a cruel concept. Mm-hmm. Like I'm saying it. Their music is tight. The whole setup is punishment for these talented kids. EXO makes bank. I don't understand. EXO has money. Like. They're fucking out there buying beamers and apartments. Like, they're doing fine, but they're given nothing. And just think about that, with how little share of their own profits that they get from SM. They're like, ro- like, Chaniel has enough to buy a $10,000 Iron Man costume. Like, they're <laughs> rolling in dough. So <laughs> how much is SM making off of these boys? And, then, and how much more could they be? <laughs> yeah, they could be making so much, like... But the thing is, I sort of get it in, in like, sort of a, a way, because EXO doesn't really need promotion. They're going to sell their albums, whether yeah, they're promoted so it's, or yeah. not. So I, I get, like, like, why would we spend money on promotions when we can just keep all the profits? I'm like, because you could be making more money out of people. And then you would have, like, the fans not be constantly mad at you. <laughs> in, like, I know that doesn't seem fun. Like, you love it when the fans are out to get you, but, like... <laughs> <laughs> like, it would just make SM's life easier if they didn't have to deal with this constant online petitions and stuff <laughs> about how little they do for their artists. How about you, Sky? What do you? Uh, so the Astro Japan debut mm-hmm. here in a oh, few yeah, days. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. 
Um, just yesterday or the day before, another soundtrack song was released by MJ and I think a chick from Wikey Mikey. I haven't listened to it yet. He's cranked out two soundtrack songs recently, so that was pretty cool. Like of big of big dramas. So that's mm, nice. So now my next dream is for him to someday have a soundtrack song with Chen, because I think that'd be really cool. Ooh, that would be. Because their vocals would be very, very good together. Uh Chen's vocals with anyone are mwah. Yeah. Mwah. Mm. <laughs> and he's not even my bias. I just love I love all of the boys, but his voice is <laughs> Go on, I interrupted. I interrupted. Um, I think that's all I know that's coming out. I'm sure there's stuff I'm missing. There's two big ones coming. And we've already talked about them in this episode. Blackpink's coming out and BTS yep. is coming oh, yeah. out with songs. Right, right. Or BTS might be yeah. in a full album. Probably. I was very, it looks like they Blackpink actually might be doing stuff. Yeah. yeah. 50 full albums a year, because why not? Why yeah. not? need to sleep. People don't need money. Like writing the songs is part of their rest and relaxation time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's not work. Oh, that's not work. That's, that's just you actually love it. When you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> They're really uh, pushing the limits of this concept for these poor boys. It, it reminds me how the leader of ATs, he always... He ends up sleeping a lot. Just, you know how a lot of idols do. They'll just fall asleep anywhere. So he does that a lot. But when he gets caught, he's like, I was thinking. I was not sleeping. <laughs> yes. I was thinking. My dad. My dad's response was, I was just resting my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sure, <laughs> dad. We believe you. The snorling was just a, a side effect. Of yeah, I was just deep breathing. Dying. Just, I was meditating yeah. deeply. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, and not on the song release front, but since AT's just wrapped up their U.S. tour, they're kind of releasing a lot of new just content stuff. So there's a new little reality show they're doing that's pretty cute of stuff oh. they did in Korea. But then there's a lot of... On Live stuff. or YouTube or what? Uh, I think it's both. They're usually pretty good about both sides of it. And honestly, translations are on both sides, too. So it's always on their Twitter, but as far as the announcements for it, but... Mm-hmm. via live or their youtube channel you'll be able to find it it's called wanted it, it's just a random little you know just like how a lot of those shows oh we're gonna go do something that we don't know what we're gonna do so the first one was they went to a uh indoor skydiving place so that was pretty <laughs> funny it's a good time stuff like that i like that because that was part of what sucked me into k-pop was like finding the bts versions mm. like the run bts and and mm. all those little things that they would do and it was just like you get to know them and then somehow with the more you know them the more the music just connects with you sometimes that yeah you feel like you know them better so then you get to know yeah. their music better too yeah but i mean I, lo- I love it really well. yeah. i love it but i i do think there's a limit to it like that's why i feel yeah. bad for bts as far as like, the amount of content they pump out for yeah. their fans, mm-hmm. it's great, but I, it's pretty constant. Like, the fans aren't used to any breaks from it. Like, there needs yeah. to be a break for everybody involved. Just, like, rest yeah. your brain a little bit. Well, you get the feeling with them that even if they did, like, even if it was like, oh, it's vacation and they're taking three weeks in Hawaii. They would take three weeks in Hawaii together and they would film videos while they yeah. were there. Yep. You know, yeah. like, it that's, wouldn't that's not actually a vacation. be a vacation. No, it's not. It's just another variety show. Yeah. yeah. Which, it's Which totally entertaining, fun, I'm not saying. But you need to actually have vacation time that's actual vacation, too. It's what funny because I think that? across the board, not even just BTS fans, but any fans of groups that have been touring for a while or had a promotion and then a tour on top of it and then are going to supposedly go right back to work <laughs> pretty yeah. much across the board. If you look through the comments, even the pretty sensible fans are like, how about you go get some rest? Please yeah. don't get sick. And we're trying to not be creepy yeah. about it, but really go sleep. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, just please, please sleep <laughs> for the love of God. <laughs> because we all know yeah. we're human. Like you guys yeah. aren't robots. Yeah. We know this. Well, and nobody wants to pay money for a ticket and, ha- like, you finally got a ticket and you're going to see this group that you love and and then one of them, like, passes out on stage and has to go to the hospital because, 
like they've just worked too hard. You know, like yeah. you don't want that to be your K-pop concert experience is right. one of them, you know, needs to sit on the stool the whole time because he's hooked up to an IV because, you know, like, yeah, let them sleep, let them eat. Yeah. Just Same thing with K-drama actors, too, but it just seems like the K-pop kids, it's they, like they have no like limits. They're, they're treated like they're, you know, they're they're treated like they're only a product and not an actual mm-hmm. individual. And that's like a problem with the system that I think uh, needs like a systematic overhaul. So it's not going to change anytime soon unless people demand that it do so. And I, I think with the boy groups, especially they're treated as a commodity or a product that yeah. has an expiration date, right? Like yeah. the girls too, but the guys have that specific like army expiration date. And it's like, we have to do as much as we can before that happens. Yeah. The girls maybe will have a little more yeah. leeway in their expiration, but the guys, it's like, we have to get them completely solid before they're into, you know, the army or wring as much money of it out of it. As yeah. you can before like they, the army. They need to like build their fan base as much as they can before the army. So it'll still exist. Mm-hmm. the enlistment but for girl groups i mean we were just talking about the generation that pretty much doesn't exist anymore of girl groups yeah. and and there are exceptions like boa mm-hmm. yeah but mm-hmm. she's pretty much the exception or a few soloists and stuff but as far as girl groups long-standing ones that have lasted more than their 10 years or whatever there aren't a ton to look at. Oh, like, yeah. it's as if a lot of the entertainment companies don't know what to do after well, eight or ten years with a well, girl group. That's also, like, an entertainment worldwide problem because suddenly mm. they're like, oh, these, these girls are too old to be sexy to men, so mm-hmm. they're canceled. It's like, it's like when you turn 32 and suddenly, like, as an actress, you're playing the you know, the, the mom, mother, the, mo- the yeah. mom to like a teenager. And you're like, <laughs> hold the phone. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. No. <laughs> well, like, well, like you had this child at 14, like, come on. I think the, um, what was it they were saying in the last Empress, um, the actor who played the emperor and the actress who played his mom are like oh, less oh, than oh, 10 oh, years yeah. apart. Yeah. In age. yeah. Like, it's come like, on, come on. Like, uh, there was a ton of like behind the scenes stuff of like the two of them were hanging out because they were like same age friends. <laughs> like, <you> know, <laughs> like, no, and this is like a problem where it's like this is why why no one bats an eye when there's like a huge age gap between like a male actor with a younger female, but it's like a big deal if like the lady actress is like five years older than the actor who's yeah. with her. Like, okay, like you know that women and men age one year at a time together. <laughs> <laughs> so they do? Just putting that out there. Like <laughs> Like, you know, women don't turn 35 and then shrivel into, like, old witch crones. Like, calm down, everyone. (laughs) Do you think that there's a part of it, as far as for K-pop girl groups and stuff, is it because at some age they maybe do seek a family and stuff? And that's why everyone else gets super uncomfortable with the likelihood of them getting a husband and a kid? Well, they also have to. Like, it's like if if a girl group member decides that they want to have a family, the entertainment business in general, not just in Korea, does not look kindly on working mothers. Canceled. It's just like canceled. If they get pregnant, like they're canceled. Like, and that's the thing. So like a lot of these girl groups have to like choose. Male actors and idols are allowed to go yeah. get married and no one bats an eye if they want to keep working. This is a plague. This is why <laughs> men, I bring it back around. <laughs> this is why men shouldn't be in charge of anything. Because they're full of nonsense. They're just full of nonsense. Done. <laughs> that was way more genteel than earlier. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah. to be to be a wee bit fair. As far as younger guy groups, 
the fans don't want to see them married for a while either. Yeah, but that's that's true. And I'm not I talking super care. young, even like like twenty or twenties. Like, like they're still like no, like the you guy from be super dating. Junior. See that I find like that there's less of that in like international fans of K-pop, right. and that's more of like a Korean fans of K-pop. Because like if you look at like for example like Lay's Chinese fans. They're like, Lay, you should get married. <laughs> you, should have, you should get a wife and have a kid. And he's like, oh, you. But, like, in Korea, no. <laughs> no yeah. one would. They'd be like, yeah. never get married. Like, be alone forever. Well, yeah, I've seen yeah. some interviews. And so, you know, the EXO guys, they're a little bit older. Like, not. Yeah, they're, they're not old. I'm just saying compared like to the young, young kid. 30s, like, you know. And so like, it's funny. You know, the fans were literally saying out loud no never date and you saw all the guys eyes all the like, guys just being like mm. like but here's my dick it's like y'all think these boys these rich attractive boys are virgins ladies <laughs> come on they getting some strange on the side we all know it like chill well that's been our dissertations on <laughs> <laughs> on the k-pop industry for this, for this month Oh, by the way, we do have our uh, Mark Madness thing. Oh, yes. We have our brackets. We launched them. They're actually the first week will be over by the time this comes out. But that does not mean that you should. We'll probably still be doing it on some level. Yeah, it'll still still be going on. So this doesn't mean that you shouldn't uh, come and join in the fun. And it is just for fun. This is a meaningless fun exercise that we wanted to do. We were not trying to build the ultimate. No, we're just having we're just recommended having a good thing. Time. We're just, we're just having each time. picked four four characters we liked and pitted them against each other in the match. Yeah. Of death. So we could do a story for you, like we Which did all the work. Be so funny yeah, because that's how we roll. That's right. We're just we're just trying to have a good time. <laughs> so we hope I that you like... guys also have a good time with the yeah. bracket and that you have yeah. fun voting and. And, you know, maybe trying to convince people of your favorites. I don't know. But, like, have fun with it. Enjoy it. And even if we picked somebody for our own bracket, that doesn't even mean that they're our favorite character of all time. It's no. Just um, yeah, that happened to me. I don't know half since... the people on these brackets. And yeah. I'm part of the group. <laughs> like, <laughs> like legitimately, to... like, groups <laughs> of, like, pairings that I didn't know a single person. Yeah, and I was like, like well, he's cute. I'm going to get on the picture. I... I can probably take the blame for most of those because there was like a perfect storm of the fact that I have seen every drama in existence pretty much, but also that I was the last person to pick my people. So it was like slim pickings. (laughs) So uh, if you're wondering where these really out of left field suggestions came from, that's me. (laughs) That's me. This has been another hilariously fun episode, I hope, of Certified Nunas. Uh, we're found wherever you're listening to this, but also on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube. We're always on Twitter because we live on the internet. So please come chat with us and <laughs> join in the fun. To Anyone is Awesome, if you don't already listen to them, you should go check them out. They've got pretty much their entire discography on Spotify and I think Apple Music as well. The music videos are delightful, and they got a real girl power vibe. So, we hope you enjoy them as much as we do. And we hope you have a fantastic week. We will be back next Monday with another delightful episode for all y'all. All right. See ya. Bye. 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 Bye.